Hello everyone, a warm welcome to all of you in the second day of online web lecture series on theoretical botany for undergraduates, organized by Department of Botany, Shorajini Naidu College for Women. In today's session, we have with us an eminent professor, Dr. Arun Banerjee, sir. Sir's topic of today's lecture is on phytochrome as regulator of photomorphogenesis. I would like Dr. Shampadatta Sharkar, ma'am, to kindly introduce sir to our students. Thank you. Shampa, ma'am. Orunda Shamande, ek to bolta galle. Prothme jeta boli Orunda Amar kar. Please do not say anything. <laughs> it's okay, I think. <laughs> Tell me about anything about me. That's enough. Okay, okay. 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 Okay, into আমার কাছে আদর্শ শিক্ষকের আর একটা প্যারামিটার আছে সেটা হলো যার কাছে আমি খুব সহজেই আমার সমস্ত প্রশ্ন করতে পারি তার জন্য কোনো নিজের কাছে দ্বিধা কাজ করে না কোনো সময় কাজ করে না যে এই সময় বিদেশে করতে পারবো কিনা এতটা সহজ প্রশ্ন সেটাও করতে পারবো কিনা এই সমস্ত প্রশ্নের উত্তর আমি বা সমস্ত প্রশ্ন আমি অকপটে অরুণদাকে করতে পারি অরুণদার সঙ্গে আমার যোগাযোগ বাঁচেনা খুবই মানে কম দিনের বিভিন্ন পরীক্ষা খাতা দেখার সূত্রে ওনার সঙ্গে আমার পরিচয় কিন্তু ওইটুকু পরিচয়েই উনি আমাকে এতটায় ভরসা দিতে পেরেছেন যে আমার যেখানে যখন যতটুকু দরকার যত সাধারণ দরকারই হোক না কেন আমি অনায়াসে তাকে এই প্রশ্নটা করতে পারি তাই আমাদের যখন এরকম একটা ওয়েব সিরিজের কথা ভাবা হলো এবং ফিজিওলজির কোনো টপিকের কথা ভাবা হলো তখন প্রথম যার কথা মনে হলো তিনি অরুণদা এবং মনে হলো আমি তা যদি অনুন্দাকে অ্যাপ্রোচ করি তাহলে সেখানে কখনোই না কথাটা আসবে না সেই জন্য আমি অরুণদাকে অ্যাপ্রোচ করা অরুণদা দীর্ঘদিন ভৈরব গাঙ্গুলি কলেজে পড়িয়েছেন এরপর রিটায়ারমেন্টের পর এখনো অন্য অন্য কলেজে এম এসি ক্লাস নেন তোমরা যারা এখন পড়ছো বা পরে এম এসি পড়বে তারা হয়তো কোনো দিন মাস্টারমাসি হিসেবে অরুণদাকে পাবেন আজকে আমি যা যা বললাম সেগুলো মিলিয়ে নিও নমস্কার <laughs> Okay, let's start uh, <clears throat> without talking much. Let's talk our topic today. Hello. Hello. Okay. Is it visible? Is it visible? I'm showing you a PowerPoint. Is it visible? Is it visible? Is it visible? ভিজিবল ইনক্লুডেড ইন ইউর বোথ আন্ডার গ্রাজুয়েট অ্যান্ড পোস্ট গ্রাজুয়েট সিলেবাস 
okay uh, if you don't uh, hear me uh, just tell me okay and uh, one thing is uh, i must say that uh, you can uh, interrupt me at any point uh, during our lecture you can interrupt me because in fact i am not a teacher so, you know i am still uh, I, i did a lot and still i think my, i am a student huh? okay so don't uh, uh, think me as a teacher uh, uh, so ask me any question at any time okay and inter- you can interrupt me i, l- I love that and uh, appreciate it okay now cytochrome so regulator of plant automorphogenesis now first Oh, we must uh, uh, we must uh, learn something about the what is photomorphogenesis okay uh, now there are t- two terms one is photomorphogenesis another one is scotomorphogenesis these photomorphogenesis and scotomorphogenesis they are regulated by different pigments okay different pigments and pigments light absorbing pigment in fact photoreceptors and cytochrome is one of them now so what is photomorphogenesis which is regulated by phytochrome not only phytochrome but there are other pigments also we are going to discuss them now this uh, what is photomorphogenesis now photomorphogenesis uh, it is a program okay it's a program or it's a developmental program it's a kind of development morphological development that plant follows when uh, when Uh, plant grows in the light in the in the in the in the light okay when plant grows in the light uh, uh, it it follows some developmental program some uh, that's called photomorphogenesis so that means growth of plant development of plant growth of plant in presence of light this is the photomorphogenesis it's a developmental program some genes are activated okay some genes are activated and they perform the photomorphogenetic program and then uh, and now this plant those uh, those follows those plant but plant when it follows uh, photomorphogenesis this plants they are much stockier and green the since it's chlorophyll green much shorter than the dark grown plant much shorter and uh, these are the characteristics of a photomorphogenetic uh, photomorphogenesis following plant and there is another term just a reverse term uh, it is called scotomorphogenesis this is the scotomorphogenesis it is this, uh, similar to that photomorphogenesis but in dark it's a developmental program okay it's a developmental program that plant follows uh, that plants follow when grown in the dark okay uh, uh, if if you if you if you germinate seedlings if you germinate बोझारे हेलो 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 चंपा हां सुन रहा है हां सुन रहा है ओके ये देखा जा रहा है ना स्क्रीन तक हम तो कोनो देखते पाछी ना हम ए बार 
ಸೀಡ್ಲಿಂಗ್ <laughs> that grows from that seeds from that germinated seeds they are isolated that means they are pale yellow uh, pale yellow uh, without any chlorophyll with long elongated hypocotyle okay long elongated hypocotyle so spin- spindly growth it grows slightly spindly spindly with an apical hook apical part it forms a hook and it tends to grow horizontally okay so this these are the characteristics morphological characteristics of a scotomorphogenetic program the plant that follows scotomorphogenetic program that means when a plant grows in the dirt it shows all these symptoms it's a pale yellow color there is no formation of chlorophyll hypocotyle is very much elongated root is very profusely developed it grows long and it grows horizontally so these are the scotomorphogenetic program now if this seeds Uh, a transfer to light if you expose it to light it starts photomorphogenetic program okay it starts photomorphogenetic program and phytochrome phytochrome involves not only phytochrome but there are other photoreceptor pigments they involve uh, in, in the photomorphogenetic program so this is the difference between photomorphogenesis and scotomorphogenesis dark grown program and light grown program it plant follows now this is the diagram if you uh, grows uh, if you germinate seeds in dark it shows like this it grows like this is very much elongated it shows an apical hook root is very much long this is a colorless this is called isolated seedling pale yellow color there is no chlorophyll synthesis pale yellow so this is the isolated seedling is a scotomorphogenetic program and this diagram it shows this picture it shows the two seedling one uh, it is grown in light on the light right one the light grown seedling is a green in color much stockier so robust uh, much shorter than the dark grown seedling and there is no apical hook root, root growth is stunted so this is the light grown seedling and isolated seedling so two types of program right one is the photomorphogenetic program and another one is scotomorphogenetic photomorphogenetic program and this photomorphogenetic program it is uh, regulated by different photoreceptors phytochrome is one of them okay so let's talk about now this is the same pictures same diagram photomorphogenetic responsive genes uh, during photomorphogenesis in light some genes are activated They, those genes are called photomorphogenetic responsive genes remember in the when a plant is growing in the light uh, in the light some genes are switched on when it grows in the dark some other genes are switched off okay so these genes are called which are switched on in light they are called photomorphogenetic responsive genes whereas those genes are switched on in the dark they are called scotomorphogenetic responsive genes so these genes are switched on and off by different photoreceptors that we are going to discuss in our later discussion okay so next now this photo uh, phytochrome is a plant pigment one of the plant pigment there are other plant pigments are also there in plant uh, in fact plant pigments essential components for photosynthesis you know that you know very well uh, now this a- every pigment all the uh, photoreceptors and plant pigment they are in fact chromoproteins all plant pigments they are chromoprotein that means uh, it consists of a chromophore a colored compound chromophore uh, and an apoprotein so they together form the chromoprotein that is the holoprotein holoprotein so it is a chromophore and an apoprotein 
So chlorophyll is one of them, chlorophyll, carotenoids, phytochrome, there are other uh, photoreceptors such as cryptochrome, phototropin, you have studied in your BSc class, or uh, zeut leaf, oreochrome, B zip, it's a transcription factor, uh, and it also acts as a photoreceptor, neochrome, it's a hybrid between phytochrome and lobe domain, orange carot carotenoid pigments, another pigment. So these are all the pigments, different pigments. They absorb red light, blue light, or chlorophyllite absorb uh, white light, and they perform different functions, different function in plants. Chlorophyll, for example, it's it, uh, responsible for synthesis of food, and uh, other pigments are responsible for different developmental programs, different developmental programs. Now, the chlorophyll, uh, 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 in fact, these responses, all these developmental responses can be two types, maybe quantitative or qualitative. Now, this photosynthesis is in fact, is in fact a quantitative response. That means it requires lots of light, okay, but other response, such as photomorphogenic response, it requires a very small amount of light, very small amount of light, maybe a few plus of red light, that is enough. So responses may be, all these developmental responses may be two types. Some responses are quantitative, they require lots of light, a huge amount of light, a continuous exposure to light, and other are qualitative. That means they require very small amount of light, very small. So two type of response, quantitative versus qualitative response. Photosynthesis is a quantitative response. Flowering is another it's a quantitative response, though it's uh, regulated by all the, all the photoreceptors, phytochrome, cryptochrome, phototropin, they all regulate uh, flowering, but it's also a quantitative response. It requires lots of light. Then, mm, uh, okay, so, and they also differ in lag time, remember. Photosynthesis, as it's a physical process, you know that, this physical process, depends on excitation of chlorophyll molecules. So it starts as soon as light falls on it, okay? It's an instant reaction. When light falls on it, within second, within millisecond, it starts reaction. Photosynthetic light, re light reaction starts within, very, uh, within a few seconds, within a few milliseconds. But lag time or induction period in case of photomorphogenic program is much longer. For example, uh, it may be it's a few minutes, a uh, few minutes to several hours, or maybe day in case of flowering, days and months. So lag time it differs. So just uh, just using lag time, we can say whether it's a quantitative response or qualitative response. If if a response requires lots of time, it's a it's lag time. If lag time is more, it's a long lag time. Uh, in case of quantitative response, in case of qualitative response, lag time is very short, very short. So this is the uh, this is how you can uh, differentiate a, a quantitative response from a qualitative response. Next, we are going to discuss uh, uh, that is the phytochrome is our topic. Uh, now, first, uh, let's talk about the discovery of phytochrome. How it was discovered. Now, phytochrome, uh, this name, phytochrome, it was, uh, it was named uh, in the 1959, okay? And uh, its character, it was not characterized until 1959. Before that, before 1959, scientists, they uh, knew that there is one pigment uh, that absorbs red and parred light, and uh, it gives some, uh, initiates some responses some uh, responses. So, uh, so in fact, Flint, Lewis Flint, can you see this one? Lewis Flint, he first showed, uh, in 1936, he first showed that red forehead light, uh, it's, uh, it stimulate the lettuce seed germination. Red light, it stimulate lettuce seed germination, while forehead light, it inhibits let to see germination. Here, Flint in 1936, he first discovered that there is one pigment, and that pigment is responsive to red and far red light because 
if that uh, if a red light is given to let to seedling let uh, germinating let to seedling germination inhibits okay but if far red light uh, is given sorry i i uh, if uh, red light is given it is ex- uh, stimulated by a far red light inhibited let to seed germination so he first proposed that there must be some pigment that absorb red and far red light okay he just proposed there is a pigment red light red far red light absorbing pigment later on borthwick and hendrix in 1954 uh, they, he uh, he they exposed alternating they exposed plant let to seed uh, germinating let to seed to alternating red and far red light alternating first red light they exposed it to red light uh, then uh, exposed it to far red light and again exposed it to red light like this so they using alternating alternative uh, alternating alternating red and far red light they prove that far red light is inhibitory to germination whereas red light is stimulatory and depends on which light is given last okay if far red light is given last after red light if you give uh, after red light if you stop if you stop that light if you keep it in dark it will germinate is it clear if you expose let to seed germinating let to seed to red light it starts germinating okay it starts germinating if you keep it in dark it will germinate but if you expose it first to red light then again to far red light and keep it in dark it stops germinating again if you first give red then far red then again red last exposure if it is a red and keep it in dark it will germinate that means last exposure they found that last exposure is very important if it's a red light if last exposure is red it germinates if last exposure it is far red then it is inhibited germination is inhibited so they proposed that there is a photoreversible pigment that must be a photoreversible pigment and they can then they are interconvertible maybe one pigment or there will be two pigment one pigment absorb red light and inhibits uh, activates flowering another pigment it uh, uh, it absorb far red light and inhibits flowering maybe there are two pigments one absorbing a red light another absorbing far red light that means these two pigments are antagonistic to each other one stimulate activates germination another inhibits germination or they they in fact proposed a radical uh, 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 radical uh, model they proposed that there is a single mod a single pigment they proposed there is a single pigment and that is photoreversible okay uh, so uh, this is called one uh, one pigment model so uh, in fact there are two models uh, initially there was two model uh one was the two pigment model there are two pigments they are antagonistic and one according to one pigment model there is just one photoreversible pigment and uh, the borthwick they proposed that this uh, they proposed that this must be the true maybe the true one photoreversible pigment and one uh, same pigment it absorbs red light it becomes far red uh, absorbing pigment and when it absorbs far red light it again becomes red light absorbing pigment so this photoreversible pigment they propose uh, so later butler he butler he then extracted phytochrome from plant extract and named it as phytochrome okay butler in 1959 and borthwick they pr- proposed in 1952 so hello. butler hello hello sir good Tarunda. evening hello good evening hello ah good sir evening. actually hello. we are facing a problem if you don't mind i want to interrupt you okay okay sure 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 sir sure, actually sure. we are not able to see full screen presentation Is so it? yes sir so oh. can you can please you? reduce ha huh. it's fine Is it? now is it correct okay thank you thank, thank you thank you sir okay 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 sorry to interrupt you oh no 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 this is this needed okay that's all 
that's welcome i welcome thank you sir i appreciate it okay thank you uh now so there are two uh, two models initially there was two two model one pigment model and two pigment model and later it was found that one pigment model it is uh, they confirm scientists they confirm in fact they are uh, borthwick and uh, hendy they confirm that it's a one pigment model it must be one pigment and later uh, butler he isolated that pigment from plant extract uh in fact uh, it's very difficult at the time it was very difficult uh, to isolate phytochrome because its concentration is very low in the plant its concentration is very low and due to some technological difficulties uh, so they couldn't isolate it but later uh, due to technological innovation technological improvement butler in 1955 he isolated phytochrome from from plants and uh, he he also uh, uh, and uh, proved that it is a the photoreversible pigment he performed experiment and found that yes it is photoreversible okay so uh, and he named it as phytochrome now this is the diagram uh, this is the uh, this is the germinating uh, lettuce seeds of your germinating lettuce seed and this is the diagram uh there is al- alternating exposure to red and infrared light if you expose it to red light uh, there is a brown color uh, so it it stop it uh, initiate germination and after if you expose it to infrared light it stop germinating okay so last exposure is important so it proves that phytochrome uh, it activates germination it activates photomorphogenic response that is germination by, by red light after absorbing red light it initiates germination it initiates a photomorphogenic response uh, that is germination germination of seeds in light let us see it requires light for germination so it's a photomorphogenic response so red light it initiates germination whereas uh, far red light it stops germination it inhibits germination that uh, henrik stewart and hendrix they proved it okay sorry both we can hendrix they proved it no so 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 how can we prove that uh, there are two uh, specific uh, that, how can we prove that a specific uh, pigment is responsible for a development a specific pigment uh, it requires uh, some specific light some specific wavelength of light and it uh, initiates a specific response how can we uh i uh, what is the how can we prove that uh, uh, that a specific that a specific response uh, or quality uh, which quality of light is required for a for which uh, response which photomorphogenic photomorphogenic response is initiated by light and which pigments are necessary for that photomorphogenic responses or uh, now there is one tool one research tool it is called axon spectrum you studied in your bsc class axon spectrum and absorption spectrum so axon spectrum what is axon spectrum axon spectrum is nothing but a graph okay it's a plot that depicts the plant response to different wavelength of light okay it's just a plot this one this is the plot plant response uh, plant response to different wavelength of light that is it's a function of different wavelength of light to a particular response okay so response as a function of wavelength of light okay x axis x axis this is the wavelength of light is the independent variable and y axis it is a response in the y axis it shows response photosynthesis or germination of uh, germination of seeds etc so this graph uh, which is a which is the function of different wavelength of light the graph that depicts the graph that shows that depicts that, that or that describe the uh, describe the different responses different responses of uh, photomorphogenic responses of plant to different wavelength of light this is called the axon spectrum so by studying axon spectrum for this is the axon spectrum for photosynthesis on the y axis we have measured uh, rate of photosynthesis 
percentage, uh, percentage of maximum rate of photosynthesis, that is oxygen evolution. And they use different wavelengths of light. And they found that blue light is most effective, blue. In between 400 to 500, there is a blue light region. That is uh, where oxygen evolution is uh, high. It shows high uh, peak. It shows peak photosynthetic rate, peak oxygen evolution. Whereas red light, on the other hand, there is another peak at red light region that also shows peaks, photosynthetic peaks. So this, uh, but so photosynthesis, it has this type of uh, action spectrum. It shows that chlorophyll pigment and chlorophyll, it's, it has also the same absorption spectrum. This is the next uh, uh, plot, next spectrum, action spectrum. It shows both action spectrum and absorption spectrum of chlorophyll. They are very similar, both action spectrum of chlorophyll and absorption spectrum of chlorophyll, they are very much similar. They show maximum activity at the blue light and at the red light region. So we can, uh, uh, the scientists, they, uh, they can conclude, by, by, but by observing this uh, graph or plot, we can say that photosynthesis is responsible, uh, photosynthetic, is, photosynthetic reaction is uh, very much active, uh, or it is activated at blue light and at red light region, whereas green and yellow light, uh, it is useless for photosynthesis. Similarly, there is, uh, this, this one is another uh, action spectrum. It's an action spectrum of uh, blue light absorbing pigment, cryptochrome, phototropin. These are uh, blue light absorbing pigment. It has a different type of uh, action spectrum. It shows a three finger fine structure uh, at the, uh, in between 400 to 500 nanometer. Okay, so three finger fine structure in between 400 to 500 nanometer of blue light region. Uh, one peak shows at uh, 420 nanometer. A middle peak, it, uh, it is uh, at the 440 nanometer. And right hand peak, uh, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, at 470 nanometer. It shows a peak. So there are three peaks, one at 420, 440, and 470 nanometer of blue light. So all blue light pigments, all blue light responses, they show this type of three, this is called three finger fine structure. Just like it, it looks like a three finger. So it's called three finger fine structure. And it indicates that it's a blue light response. Okay, so by observing different uh, action spectrum, we can infer that this is the blue light response, this is the photosynthetic response. Okay, so this is the tool. Action spectrum is a tool. We can detect the nature of light absorbed by a particular pigment in uh, in, uh, that to initiate a particular response. Okay. So you must study them. Action spectrum and absorption spectrum is very important. Next, we are going to discuss, so we are discussing phytochrome. Now, uh, so uh, phytochrome, now if phytochrome pigment, it has uh, different properties, properties of phytochrome. Now I'm going to discuss some properties of phytochrome. Now, one of the important properties uh, that we have already discussed that photoreversibility, phytochrome, uh, it is a photoreversible pigment. That means when phyt phytochrome pigment is exposed to red light, uh, it absorbs red light and that, uh, uh, that form, that uh, phytochrome, it is converted to another form, far red light absorbing form. And uh, generally it is that you, you know that, it's called P, PR to PFR conversion. You know, PR, it is the phytochrome pigment. Okay, phytochrome pigment. Uh, it is denoted as PR, capital P, small r. Now, PR, it's a red light absorbing form. When it absorbs red light, it becomes PFR. P, capital P, small f, small r, PFR. It's another form, it absorbs far red light. Okay, so this, 
So it's a photoreversible pigment. And uh, PFR, it can absorb only far red light. By, uh, by absorbing far red light, PFR is converted back to PR. So phytochrome is a photoreversible. When it absorbs red light, it becomes PFR. And when PFR absorbs far red light, it becomes again PR. This is called photo reversibility of phytochrome. It's a photoreversible pigment, it's the only pigment. Phytochrome is the only pigment that is photoreversible. In fact, these two forms uh, are the isoform. They are isoform. They are the, in fact, they are isomer, I should say. They are isomer. One is cis isomer, another one is trans isomer. Okay. And uh, by absorbing red light, the cis isomer, it becomes trans isomer. Far red light, by, by absorbing far red light, the trans isomer, it again converted back to cis PR isomer. So it's a cis trans isomerization, cis trans conversion. So this is the this is one of the properties of phytochrome, photoreversibility. It's a photoreversible pigment. Okay. Now another character, another property is the photostationary state. Photo, photo stationary state of phytochrome. In fact, these two forms, PR and PFR, these two forms, it absorb this to PR or PFR, they absorb both red and far red light. Remember, PR and PFR, these two forms, they can absorb both red light and far red light. Now, what happens when PR absorb red light? Okay, red light of two, uh, 620 nanometer to 700 nanometer, when it absorbs red light, PR is converted to PFR. But note that you cannot completely convert PR to PFR because PFR can also absorb red light. PFR, uh, it absorbs far red light, it can also absorb uh, red light. So we cannot fully convert one form to other. If you have, if you expose PR to red light, in fact, 12, 80% uh, is converted to PFR. 12% still remains as PR. As these two pigments, they can absorb both light, both red and far red light. So you cannot fully convert one form to the other. Always a ratio is always maintained. For example, in this case, 80%, 88% is PFR, while 12% still remains as PR. So a ratio is always maintained. So if you expose PFR to far red light, it becomes PR. Here, if you expose PFR, it mainly absorbs far red light, but you also absorb red light. Now, if you expose the PFR to far red light, 2% remains as PFR. Most of them, 98% is converted back to PR. So here also a ratio is maintained, PFR to PR. There is always a ratio is maintained, that is PFR over total phytochrome. This ratio is called phi. This ratio is called phi is equal to uh, PFR divided by total phytochrome, that is PR form plus PFR form. Okay, PR plus PFR is the total phytochrome. And PFR divided by total phytochrome, this is called the phi ratio. This is a ratio. This is a photostationary ratio. This is, the, this is called the photostationary state. This ratio is important. A particular ratio, uh, it induces a particular response. Is it clear? A particular, in fact, this ratio, it varies depending on the quality of light, how much red light is present, how much far red light is present. You know that red and far red light, uh, quality of light, it differs uh, through the day. In the morning time, uh, the quality of red and far red uh, is slightly different, uh, uh, different from the, uh, at, at noon. At noon, there is more red light than far red light in the evening or just before, uh, after dawn, in the evening, just before dusk, 
there is more fire light than red light okay uh, I, in fact uh, uh, under the shade under the shed under the canopy there is more fire light than red light so this ratio varies so depending upon the quality of light phytochrome a ratio of phytochrome a particular ratio of phytochrome a particular phi or ratio is maintained and that ratio is important that ratio a particular ratio a specific ratio it induces a particular response okay and this ratio varies depending on light quality this is called photostationary state okay this is called photostationary state another uh, property of phytochrome is it clear now there is another property now phytochrome you know it absorb red and red light it absorb red and red light now this absorption uh, this absorption um this uh, 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 this absorption uh, uh, depends on fluence in fact different in fact different responses different responses for example germination of arabidopsis seeds or germination of lettuce seeds or flowering or other uh, responses of uh, phytochrome they need different types of different amount of light that's that's important different amount of light different responses phytochrome responses they require different amount of light different amount of light in plant physiology but plant uh, or plant physiologists they use this term fluence fluence is the term so most plant phy physiologists they use and um, fluence is the uh, is a term used by the scientists it is a term it is in fact it is a measure of light quantity how much photons are there how much photons are there in a light how much photons how how many quanta are there in a light that is called fluence okay in fact uh, this is the definition uh, fluence is the micromoles we can measure fluence as micromoles per micromoles micromoles photon present micromoles photons or quanta present per square meter this is called the fluence fluence is the term that uh, that uh, designate but that represent the amount of light what is the amount of light that is the micromole okay its unit is unit of fluence is micromole photons present per square meter okay this is the fluence one fluence a fluence this is the unit of fluence amount of light and there is another term this called fluence rate fluence rate that is micromole micromole uh, photons per square centimeter per second okay the rate okay it depends on time it depends on exposure exposure of time how, how much you how much uh, if a particular plant has been exposed what is the time so if you multiply time it becomes fluence rate okay and, and, and in a in a single flower if you expose a plant uh, uh, if you just uh, give uh, one or two flowers it uh, we, we we call it a fluence it's a fluence how much fluence is there that but fluence rate we use the plant physiologists they use fluence rate when they expose a plant to for a longer period longer period of time that's uh, they use fluence rate so time is very important in that case so generally fluence rate is used in case of responses where it requires a very small amount of light okay fluence the term fluence is used in case of responses that requires very small amount of light a few plus okay a few plus for example now uh, uh, this responses so uh, uh, responses phytochrome responses depending on amount of light amount of light some responses requires a very small amount of light some requires a very large amount of light and on that basis of amount of light 
uh, required, phytochrome uh, responses can be three types. Uh, it is called very, uh, very uh, low fluence response, very low fluence response, this one, very low fluence response, then uh, low fluence response and high irradiance response. So there are three types of responses depending on amount of light required to initiate a response. Very flow lens response, very flow, very flow, sorry, very low fluence response, low fluence response and high irradiance response. In case of very low fluence response, it requires very small amount of light. For example, it requires 0 0.001 micromole per square meter. Okay, if light, it contains 0 0.001 micromole per square meter, it, uh, this, uh, it initiates germination of uh, Arabidopsis thaliana seeds. Am I clear? In case of very flow, very flow, very low fluence response, example is Arabidopsis, Arabidopsis seed germination. It's a very low fluence response because it starts germinating. Okay, this seeds, it starts germinating. If just a single plus containing 0 0.001 micromole per square meter of light, it initiates germination of Arabidopsid seed. Okay. In fact, this amount of light, 0 0.001 micromole per square meter, uh, it is, it, uh, in fact, uh, in fact uh, a few, uh, few seconds, if you expose plant a few seconds to start a light, uh, uh, it is one tenth. It is one tenth of uh, star light. Okay, if you expose a few seconds of starlight, uh, uh, it, uh, it attains that micromole, that 0 0.001 micromole per square meter. Okay. And this amount of light is one-tenth of the light, uh, uh, one-tenth of the light uh, of the uh, firefly, uh, a single flash of firefly. Okay. You know, keep a single flash of firefly uh, it contains some light, and one tenth of the light, one tenth of that uh, single flash of firefly contains this amount of photons, 0 0.001 micromoles per square meter. So this a uh, very this is a very low amount of light, very small amount of light, very low amount of light. This amount of light it initiates some responses. For example, Arabidopsis seed germination. Okay, Arabidopsis seed germination it requires a very small amount of light. And this uh, response says it is saturated at 0 0.05 micromole per square meter. This is called very low fluence response. Example is Arabidopsis germination. Then there is low fluence response. It requires more light. It requires one micromole per square meter to thousand micromole. There are some responses that requires this amount of fluence, one to one thousand micromole per square uh, square meter per square meter. So it's also a very low amount of light. And uh, in fact, uh, lettuce seed germination is low fluence response. It requires a very low amount of light. But uh, OK, so lettuce seed germination, inhibition of hypocotyl elongation, regulation of leaf movement, all these are low fluence response. Very small amount of light is required. Very low amount of light is required. And there is also another response is called high irradiance response. High irradiance, HIR response. It requires lots of light, a continuous exposure to light. Ah, it's a continuous exposure to light, a prolonged exposure. This re response, it requires prolonged exposure to light. Continuous exposure to light. So uh, some response is initiated. initiated. For example, anthocyanin biosynthesis, flowering, all, the, all these uh, responses that require, say, large, is a huge amount of light, a high amount of light, not low. These are called high irradiance response. 
So phytochrome responses may be three types, very low fluence response, very low, low fluence response, and high irradiance response. Okay. So these are the properties of phytochrome. Now, before we, uh, now, you must know this one, that's phytochrome notation. You know, phytochrome, it is generally written as PHY. Okay, phytochrome, it is, it is represented as PHY. In fact, the phytochrome, uh, it's um, the uh, protein, it's uh, the pro uh, gene, gene of phytochrome, it is written in capital, uppercase letter, okay. G, gene of phytochrome, it is written in, or it notation is PHY, all uppercase letter, and italicized. It is written in italics, and it's a capital, all capital, PHY, uppercase, uppercase letter. And that gene, that mutated gene is uh, written as PHY. Is it clear? PHY, small, uh, lowercase, lowercase letter, PHY. This is the mutated form, mutated gene of phytochrome. And PHY is used for PHY capital, uh, only capital. It is used for apoprotein part, okay? It, uh, it, uh, it's the upper protein part is called PHY, PHY, not italicized, okay, and is uppercase. It is for, uh, it is to designate upper protein. And PHY, it is, uh, it is used for the holoprotein of phytochrome, PHY, PHY, it is used for holoprotein. So these are the notation that is used in phytochrome biology. Now, phytochrome, there are different types of phytochrome. It says there it is family, phytochrome. There are different types of phytochrome in plant. Phytochrome A, B, C, D, E. We'll discuss them tomorrow. And there are different, different functions. We're going to discuss them tomorrow. So these are the phytochrome families. Phytochrome A, B, C, D, E. We're going to discuss tomorrow. Now, today we're going to discuss this one, the structure of phytochrome. Uh, this is the structure of phytochrome. Phytochrome, uh, no, it's a protein. It's a soluble protein, okay? Phytochrome is a soluble protein. Uh, it's a soluble protein. There is a note. There it is. It's a soluble protein. And it's a dimeric. That means it consists of two polypeptides. Okay. It's made of two polypeptides. It's a dimeric. It consists of two polypeptides. And molecular mass is 250 kilodalton. Each subunit is 125 kilodalton. You'll get all them in any book. If you, in any plant physiology book, you'll find them. So it's a dimeric protein. Uh, it's a, each monomer is 125 kilodalton. Total hollow protein, it is a 250 kilodalton. And hollow protein uh, consists of an upper protein part and chromoprotein, uh, chromo, chromophore. That chromophore is called phytochromobilin. Okay. This is a protein, hollow protein. It has an upper protein part and a uh, chromophore. Chromophore is called phytochromobilin. Chromophore, it is a linear tetrapyrrole. Okay. Chromophore is a this is the structure of phytochrome. It's a dimeric protein, okay? Dimeric protein, and this one is monomer. This is the monomer. This is the phytochrome pigment. And this pigment, it has, a, uh, it has one, one uh, chromophore. That is a, it's a linear tetrapyrrole ring. It is called phytochromobilin. Phytochromobilin is the chromophore of phytochrome, okay? So this phytochrome and its chromophore, uh, together they are called the phytochrome holoprotein. Upper protein plus chromophore or phytochromobilin, they are called the, they are known as apoprotein. This is the, can you see it? This is the, this is the 
linear tetrapyrrole chain. You know that chlorophyll? Chlorophyll is a cyclic, cyclic tetrapyrrole. But in case of phytochrome, uh, phytochrome, phytochromobilin, that is chromophore or phytochrome, it is a linear tetrapyrrole, linear tetrapyrrole chain. It contains four pyrrole groups, four pyrrole rings, sorry, four pyrrole rings attached to one another by, uh, by, by CH2 linkage, um, uh, methyl linkage, methylene linkage, CH2 methylene linkage, and it is attached with the protein part, a, a specific cysteine residue of the apoprotein. In fact, that's as 321, that's cysteine, cysteine, sorry, cysteine is the 321. 321 cysteine uh, of this polypeptide, it is attached. Uh, the, the, that cysteine protein, cysteine, it, uh, it, it forms a thioester linkage with one of the tetrapyrrole ring, one of the tetrapyrrole ring of uh, photochromobilin, phytochromobilin. So it, there is a ester linkage. Uh, this is the ester linkage. See? This is the S. This is the ester linkage, thioester, thioester linkage, uh, thioester bond, thioester linkage. It is attached with the uh, one uh, bond. It is attached with the five, five, one pyrrole, one pyrrole ring, and another one is attached to a particular cysteine, 321. That cysteine is 321. Its numbering is 321 amino acid. This is a 321 amino acid of apoprotein part. So a specific cysteine residue is showing it is attached. Okay, this tetrapyrrol chain is attached with a particular cysteine, cysteine residue by thioester linkage. So this is the, and this is the ribbon diagram of phytochrome. After studying crystal structure of phytochrome, this is the ribbon diagram of phytochrome. So we don't need them. Okay, well, now I'm going to discuss this one. This is the phytochrome pigment. This is the uh, molecular structure, in fact, domain structure, molecular structure or domain structure of uh, phytochrome pigment. Uh, after studying the crystal structure uh, of phytochrome, uh, scientists, they, uh, they proposed a model. And this model is the most recent, most recent model. <laughs> And this proposed by Hang and King. Hang, H O A N G Huang. Sorry, Huang, H O A N G Huang, et al. Uh, and they proposed it in the year 2019, uh, most recent model of plant phytochrome. Now, this is uh, this model. It shows one subunit of phytochrome. As I've said that phytochrome is a, it's a, it, it's a dimeric protein. This is, the, this is the diagram. It's a dimeric. It, it consists of two polypeptides. Okay, this, this diagram, it shows that it's a dimeric. There's two polypeptides, but this diagram shows just only one. This, this, it shows only one, this, this one. It shows only one polypeptide. This one also, it shows one polypeptide. This is the polypeptide, one polypeptide, one monomer of phytochrome. Now this monomer, this phytochrome monomer or phytochrome apoprotein, uh, it contains several domains. In fact, first uh, it has two uh, modules. This, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this structure, this molecular structure uh, or this model, I should say, this model, uh, uh, scientists, they propose this model and according to them, Phytochrome, it, uh, it possesses two modules. It has two modules. One is photosensory module, PSM. Another one is output module. Photosensory module, in some book, it is also called photosensory domain. Photosensory domain. Or output module, it is also called sensory domain. Sensory, sensory domain. And photosensory module, it is called photo uh, sensory domain, photosensory domain or input domain, some book is also called input domains. Anyway, so this is uh, according to the most recent uh, model, uh, 
दिस इज द फोटो सेंसरी मॉड्यूल इन टर्मिनल पार्ट इन टर्मिनल पार्ट it uh, it contains a photosensory module because it senses light photosensory it senses light and uh, another part this output module c terminal n it it, is, it contains output module after uh, photo activation it performs some function it, it initiates some function that's why it is called output module also called response regulator module so this is the two modules two part of the pigment and this two part remains joined by one hinge region one hinge region is a simple uh, polypeptide just a polypeptide same polypeptide of this uh, of this sub unit so this is a polypeptide it has the n terminal and c terminal n in between n and c terminal there are two module photosensory module and output module they mean joined by connected by hinge region by a hinge region hinge region now this photosensory module and output module again they are divided they they, are, they also contain several domains okay pass domain gas domain phi domain these are all the domains domains of phytochrome uh, pigment phytochrome uh, molecule now what is domain domain is the uh, you know a polypeptide uh, after uh, when it is synthesized from ribosome you know uh, when it is synthesized in fact uh, uh, proteins a uh, polypeptide that synthesize on ribosome then it comes out Uh, from the ribosome they release from a uh, ribosome and after release in fact these uh, polypeptide they are uh, straight chain molecules okay now this molecule straight chain molecules they folds they undergo folding and uh, uh, there's some protein they just folds uh, this this give a as a monomeric protein they just uh, give a, 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 a just give a ball like structure after folding some protein they form several folds okay those proteins may have several folds phytochrome is one of them it has several folds and these folds are called domain in fact uh, uh, domains are in fact that defined as domains are those folds um, fold those uh, uh, folds independent of other okay there are many folds but if one folds one fold uh one part one part of the fold it if it folds if it folds independent of other folds and if it has a specific function then uh, it is termed as domain is it clear i repeat a protein may have several folds it may show different foldings and all those folding may have different functions if those folds if those if those different folds foldings they fold independent of other folds okay if if they fold independent of other folds and if they have a specific function then we call them as domain domain of a protein so phytochrome it has several domains several folds they fold independently and they have specific functions and domains are these are the domains pass domain gas domain phi domain psa domain these are all domain and they have uh, they fold independently and they have specific function now besides that this phytochrome it has a long n terminal end n terminal it has long n terminal extension ntc ntc stands for long n terminal extension is the n terminal extension it is long n terminal extension after nte n terminal extension there is pass domain p a s pass it is named it is named as pass because it is very, it is very this pro, uh, it it is very uh, it it shows homology with three other proteins par par protein p a r r n protein a r n t r n and s i m sim 
This is the three proteins. They have different functions. P A R P A R A R N T R N T and S I N C. So this this fold this fold it shows homology with three other proteins. P A S sorry P A R R N T and C. So that this fold it is named as P A S. By using the initial letter of these three protein, par protein, RN protein A, A has A, A, it is taken from RN and S it is taken from C protein. That's why it is named as PAS PAS domain. Okay, now this PAS domain, it has uh, uh, this PAS domain uh, uh, is very important because it is responsible for Photo sense, photo. It is responsible for photo absorption, photo sensitization. Okay, photo activation of phytochrome. It's very important for photo activation of phytochrome. Now, next domain is GAF, G A F, GAF domain. GAF. It also uh, very. It's so similarity of homologies with three other proteins. Uh, I'm not going to mention them. I'm going to discuss them. Now this gap domain, another domain, is a cup shaped structure. Uh, uh, within this cup shaped structure, within this cup, phytochromobilin, that is, pyrrol, uh, stretch in pyrrol, it remains embedded. It remains attached. It remains embedded and attached with a particular serine residue, serine, particular cysteine residue, cysteine three twenty one. Cysteine two uh, three twenty one residue it remains attached. So this is the GAF domain. It contains phytochromobilin and take part in cistern conversion. It's a very important protein. Uh, it, uh, it it's responsible for cistern conversion, photoreversibility of uh, photoreversible reaction of phytochrome or cistern. Isomerization of phytochrome. So this is the gap domain. Then there is phi domain, P H O I. Phi means phytochrome domain. Uh, this phytochrome domain, no, in between, uh, in the pass domain, and in between pass and gap domain, there is one uh, figure of eight-like structure. It is not shown in the diagram. In the uh, in the diagram, uh, mm -hmm. it, it is a there is a lasso-like structure, figure of eight-like structure, figure of eight-like. Polypeptide. Uh, it is called not lasso. K N O T not lasso. A L A S S O not lasso. This one is photosensitive. It senses light. So that's why it is called photosensitive. Not K N O T not lasso. L A S S O. And it's a figure of eight-like structure. Figure of eight-like structure, not lasso. Photosensitive, not lasso. It is uh, it is attached in between pass and gap domain. Okay, and is responsible for light absorption and cistern photoconversion of phytochrome. Next is the phy uh, phy domain. Phy domain it contains a, a loop-like structure, a spoon-like structure. It's a spoon-like structure. It is called beta hairpin. It is not level here. It is called beta hairpin. Okay. It is attached with the phi domain. P H Y phi domain says spoon-like structure or tongue-like structure. Tongue-like structure. Uh, it is called beta hairpin. It looks like a hairpin. Huh? Atomic structure. It looks like a hairpin. So this is called a beta hairpin. It is also responsible for photoconversion or for cis-trans isomerization. We are going to discuss tomorrow. Now there is another uh, hinge region after phi, and there is other two, uh, pass A and pass B. Pass A and pass B. Uh, that means they are related to pass domains. Pass A and pass B. They are related to pass domains. So. Uh, it is to be called in some book. It is called PRD, PRD one, PRD two, like that. 
in some books prd means pass related domain is very similar to pass domain so it is also called prd domain do to watch there are two domains uh, remain side by side uh, now in some uh, this this model it, it, it uh, call it, uh, it calls it pass a and pass b okay it is named as pass a and pass b now pass a and pass b uh, there are two domains and this domain it contains um, it contains uh, a signal sequence signal sequence a particular amino acid sequence that is responsible for uh, uh, transfer of this phytochrome from cytoplasm into the nucleus okay in fact after photoactivation after the formation of pfr form after the uh, when light falls on phytochrome it becomes pfr and that active pfr it enters nucleus okay it enters the nucleus and for this entry it requires some permission in fact it requires some signal some in fact some specific sequence of amino acid allows it to enter the nucleus okay that specific sequence uh um, it this pass a and pass b it contains that specific sequence that specific signal sequence and they are called uh, nuclear localizing sequence nuclear localizing sequence these are the signal sequence a particular a particular sequence of amino acid that allows phytochrome to enter uh nucleus to enter the nucleus in fact there are there are other sequence also other uh, sequence uh, signal sequence some are responsible for transfer the molecule to the uh, endoplasmic reticulum some to the mitochondria some to the chloroplastid so all the proteins they have a particular sequence some particular amino acid sequence these are called the signal sequence okay some sequence allows that molecule to enter the mitochondria some sequence allows them to enter the mitochondria like that so in this case in this case of phytochrome phytochrome as it enters nucleus for its activity so uh, it uh, it requires to enter nucleus and for that it requires nuclear localizing sequence and that nuclear localizing sequence uh, uh, it is located within this pass domain in fact it remains hidden it remains hidden within this pass domain after photoactivation it is exposed we are going to discuss them tomorrow now uh, it remains hidden within this uh, pass domain so what i said it's a nuclear localizing sequence pass domain next uh, hkrd domain it stands for histidine kinase related domain histidine kinase related domain now uh, in fact in bacteria and in some other plants this histidine kinase okay uh, it is a kinase type of autophosphorylating protein is it clear in bacteria bacteria uh, they have different kinase protein they are called autophosphorylating kinase clear yeah. in bacteria and in some plants also in fact uh, cytokinin uh, receptor it so it has also histidine kinase like domain histidine kinase like domain by histidine kinase related domain now phytochrome initially scientists they thought that it it, it has uh, because because of its sequ uh, sequence similarity with the histidine kinase protein okay this uh, this hkrd domain histidine kinase related domain it has a sequence similarity amino acid sequence is 12 to 17% amino acid sequence similarity with the bacterial histidine kinase protein is it clear this protein hkrd of phytochrome ah okay it shows 12 to 17% homology 12 to 17% amino acid sequence similarity with the histidine kinase protein enzyme enzyme protein of bacteria so scientists initially they thought it acts like a histidine kinase of phytochrome that means it undergoes autophosphorylation 
by the expenditure of ATP, it can add one phosphate to itself. As a result, phytochrome, it becomes activated. Okay. Initially, the scientists, they thought that this is the histidine kinase. It is, it, is, it is very similar to histidine kinase protein of bacteria. So they named it as histidine kinase related domain. Related, why it is related? Because it is only 12 to 17 percent similar. It shows similarity, sequence similarity, 12 to 17 percent with the bacterial histidine kinase. So initially they thought it is a histidine kinase uh, uh, enzyme. So it can autophosphorylate itself by utilizing, by the expenditure of ATP, it can add one phosphate to itself and is activated. Okay, after light, uh, light absorption, it is activated by its autophosphorylating activity. Is it clear? But later on, scientists they discovered that it has no histidine kinase activity because for histidine kinase activity, uh, for histidine kinase activity or any histidine kinase activity requires a specific histidine molecule. Is it clear? For histidine kinase activity in bacteria and other plants also, those who have histidine kinase protein, that a specific, a specific histidine moiety is essential. A specific histidine moiety must be present so that it can autophosphorylate itself. But in this case, later scientists, they discovered that it has no such, phytochrome has no such specific histidine moiety that can be utilized, but that is responsible for autophosphorylation. So it is not, so later it, uh, it has proved that, uh, now it, uh, scientists, they call, it, it, it has no, they say that it has no, histidine kinase activity. So, but so, so how it is activated, how phytochrome is activated? And uh, now recent uh, study, uh, it, it, uh, it showed that the, 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 there are different uh, serine residue on the NTE, N-terminal extension. At the N-terminal extension, there are several serine residue. And at the hind region, there is one serine residue they undergo phosphorylation by a specific kinase enzyme, specific cytoplasmic kinase enzyme. They, uh, they phosphorylate this serine moiety that are present at the N-terminal extension and at hinge region. They, they add phosphate, they phosphorylate. As a result, this phytochrome is activated after light absorption. So histidine kinase related domain, though name persists, name still persists, but it has no histidine kinase activity because it lacks a specific histidine moiety that is required for histidine kinase activity. Okay, so these different serine residues present at the NTE, in terminal extension and at the hinge region, they are phosphorylated by a specific cytoplasmic kinase enzyme. They phosphorylate them, those his, uh, serine residue and phytochrome, it is phosphorylated and is, as a result it is activated after absorption of red light. So uh, this is the structure, uh, it's a module, uh, molecular, mod, uh, molecular model of recent molecular model of phytochrome. Okay, molecular structure of phytochrome. This is one subunit, but there are two subunits, as this diagram shows, there are two subunits here. There are two subunits, they remain side by side and uh, are responsible for photoactivation. So they are dimeric protein, they undergo dimerization. Initially one monomer is produced, but later on, uh, this pass A domain, pass A and pass B domain, they are responsible for dimerization. Initially, only one polypeptide is synthesized. This polypeptide then undergoes dimerizations. And this pass A and pass B domain, they are responsible for dimerization of phytochrome apoprotein or phytochrome. This is the dimeric form of phytochrome. Okay. 
So this is the structure of phytochrome. This is the ribbon model of phytochrome. This is the actual how it is uh, how it is found in case of uh, in, in crystal structure. This is the ribbon model. There are different folds, hairpin, gap domain, phi domain, PQB, phytochrome, phytochromobilin, and there is a helical spine. At the center, there is a helical spine. So it's a dimeric part. Uh, left, uh, left one colored part, one is uh, one dimer, and colorless part on the right, on your right, is the uh, another another subunit. It's a dimer. Uh, one dimer, it has been colored. And so this is all about the structure uh, or molecular structure of phytochrome and its different properties. Okay. Uh, tomorrow we are going to discuss the different functions. Uh, how this, uh, how photoconversion occurs, how cis trans conversion occurs, and their role. What is the role? You know that PFR form is active, is the most active form. It performs different photomorphogenetic reactions. Uh, uh, and so we are going to discuss them tomorrow. Okay. So this is all for today, I think. Is there any question? You can ask me any question. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh -huh. Hello, sir. Uh, students, students, if you have any questions, kindly respond. Kindly ask, sir. This is a great opportunity for all of you. Do you have any question? Lots of questions. I think there are lots of questions. It's very difficult to uh, understand all this in the in the online. It's very difficult to teach. You know. Uh, if you, okay, any, if you have any question, that, just ask me. Is there any question? Hello, students. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Is there any question, students? Please, you are free to ask. Kono question as a ball. Any question. Kono question thakle ball. Please don't hesitate. And it is a bit difficult to understand. I know it's an online class. Is, in the online class, it's not a, a real class. Offline class is more uh, advantageous. You can, you can teach easily. And, but online class is very difficult. Has lots of problems, network problems. And board work is essential, I think. Any question? Hello, students. One question at the GS Kota Paris. One question. To the syllabus at the Ache, to the syllabus at the Ache, are you low fluence response? The Ache, sorry, very low fluence at the Ani. Syllabus at the Glam to the undergraduate syllabus, third year. The Ache to do low fluence and low energy response. Low fluence volani, low energy response. I high energy response. It's not a high energy response. Wow. Fluence cause are mentioned in the energy of an energy tab. We don't uh, uh, explain it in energy tab. We explain it in fluence terms. Uh, modern land physiology, they use fluence instead of energy. So, and uh, we talked about them very low fluence response, low fluence, and high fluence, high irradiance response. In your syllabus, the syllabus is uh, wanted just. Uh, wanted from you just a low fluence response, low energy response, and high energy response. Okay, uh, but we uh, we discussed very low fluence response, arabic obsessive germination, low fluence, and high radiance response. No question, at least students uh, say thanks to sir for such a wonderful lecture. Uh, it's not wonderful. I don't think. I don't think. I. I. I in fact, I understand <laughs> what I said. How I taught. I it's not enough. I it is not enough. It is not enough. Uh, Hello, 
মানে জিনিসটা থেকে কোয়েশ্চেন করাটা অনেক ইজি হবে আমি যতটুকু ঠিক আছে আমি পাওয়ার পয়েন্টটা আমি পাওয়ার পয়েন্টটা আমি দিয়ে দেব হ্যাঁ পাওয়ার পয়েন্টটা পাঠিয়ে দেব সুরেন্দ্রজি এটা নিতে পারে আমি কালকে কালকে পাঠিয়ে দেব কালকে ক্লাসের শেষের পর আমি পাওয়ার পয়েন্টটা পাঠিয়ে দেব ঠিক আছে আচ্ছা আরে আজকে তোমাদের প্রশ্ন বেশি থাকবে আর কি হ্যাঁ 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 আজকে কালকে তাহলে দেখা হবে সি ইউ টুমরো দে ওকে হ্যাঁ বল বল এনি কোশ্চেন আমি শুনতে শোনা যাচ্ছে বহুদিন আগে কাজ করার সুযোগ হয়েছিল আমি সম্পর্ক কথাটাই রিপিট করছি যে আমরা কিন্তু এই ফ্লুয়েন্স গুলো এর আগে আমি পড়াইনি বা আমাদের সিলেবাস ছিল না এখন নতুনটা অনেকটাই হয়েছে বা মোড হয়েছে ছিল না অনলাইন ছাড়া আর বোর্ড ওয়ার্ক ছাড়া একদম নতুন তো একটু সময় নেবে কালকে আবার দেখা হবে ভবিষ্যতে <laughs> Thank you. Oh.